everyone. I am Kimberly, the 5-Minute NP. The 5-Minute NP was born out of my belief that small, incremental changes can drastically change the trajectory of your life. Our genes do not have to determine our lifespan. My goal through this podcast is to act as a roadmap that bridges the gap between knowledge and action, leading to you living your healthiest, happiest, longest life. Welcome to the 5-Minute NP Podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 5-Minute NP Podcast. I was fortunate to interview David Toman, the nootropics expert. He is our source for the world of nootropics. He provides extensive, up-to-date neuroscience research and tips for boosting our brain power. Through his science-based research and his own personal experiences, he knows that we can have a razor-sharp mind within days. Whether you are new to finding safe, legal ways to boost your mental health and brain power, or you're an experienced neurohacker, you will discover the very latest in neuroscience and new ways to enhance cognitive ability. He discusses how he discovered new tropics, how they actually saved his life, then what led him to become the new tropics expert. David is a wealth of information. He is one of my favorite guests and his website is an incredible resource. I know you will get great value from this interview. Enjoy it. Welcome to the 5-Minute MP Podcast. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy the interview. Hi, David. Welcome. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have this conversation. I'm so glad I found you. Your knowledge is incredible. We're going to talk about fixing the human brain. That's right. That can go wrong with it. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's funny because a lot of people don't think about the brain, but without it, where are we, right? You know what? Uh, I never, it, you know, even growing up, you knew that there was some supplements, you know, because they were on grocery store shelves and, and pharmacy shelves. and But it never occurred to me that there was anything that could specifically help the human brain until I got, I was diagnosed adult ADD. This is about 16 years ago, 17 years ago now. And the doctor prescribed Ritalin. And it, the first day that I used Ritalin, it was like a miracle. I could, for the first time in my adult life, I could focus. Because yeah. prior to that, I struggled all the time with, I couldn't focus. And my performance reviews every year, I was an executive in various corporations and and when you're working in that capacity, the boss sits you down every year and gives you a performance review, right? And the performance <laughs> review was always, David, you're a fanta fantastic manager, you're a great executive, you're good with people, you're a great salesperson, but you've got to learn how to focus. So I went out and I bought the books on how to focus and I bought the books on how to be a good executive, but I couldn't get it. I thought yeah. it was a moral failing. And wow. then about 18 years ago now, man, it's been a long time. Um, I met this gorgeous blonde on North Miami Beach. <laughs> Lara, her name is Lara. And uh, within six months, we got married. And wow. in the first year that we were together, she saw what was going on. And she said, there's this psychiatrist in, in Palm Beach that I want you to meet. And it turns out this guy was a rock star. I mean, he was just one of these guys. Within 10 minutes, he diagnosed me adult ADD and PTSD. Wow. And for ADD, he prescribed Ritalin. And... Ritalin worked fantastic, except that within a couple of years, I started growing tolerant to it. Yeah. And I panicked because I'm going, I finally find something that works and it's going to stop working. I don't think so. Yeah. Now, mind you, this was before there were any books on this. There were no websites on this. I had to figure out how, how did Ritalin work? Methylphenidate. I found out there's a dopamine reuptake. I found this information out just by reading, going to PubMed and reading clinical studies. And I found out that Ritalin was a dopamine reuptake inhibitor. So what does that mean? It, it, maybe I've got a problem with dopamine in my brain. Well, how do I fix that? And I found out that L-tyrosine, if you took L-tyrosine, tyrosine, it's a precursor to dopamine. So, but when I was doing this research, I also found out that one of the other problems with adult, with ADD and ADHD is brain cell signaling. And that's dependent on acetylcholine. So how do you increase that? And I found out that you could use either alpha GPC or CDP choline, but it needed a cofactor. It's called acetyl L-carnitine or LCAR for short. So there was a GNC around the corner from where we were living at the time. And I got some L-tyrosine and alpha GPC and LCAR, brought it home, started using it and Ritalin started working again. Wow. And that was the first time it occurred to me, wow, there are supplements that help the brain. <laughs> Right. You know? And 
so I've been using those same supplements for um, three times a day for since then. I've never had to increase my Ritalin dose. I've never grown tolerant to it again. I take a third dose around four o'clock in the afternoon. I don't suffer the stimulant crash that you normally do. Wow. And, but I still had not heard the word nootropics, you know, it was just supplements that help the brain. And then fast forward um, several years, and I won't belabor this, but I got really, really sick and ended up in the ER because my wife thought I was having a heart attack. Um, my life was falling apart at that time. I mean, I was falling asleep at two o'clock in the afternoon, every afternoon. I just felt awful and brain fog and freezing and my business was failing. We were broke. My marriage was on the rocks. And anyway, she took, takes me into the ER one day because she thought I was, things got particularly bad. And yeah. they said, hey, it's not your heart, but you're hypothyroid. I went, okay, <laughs> where'd that come from? <laughs> and, and so they prescribed Synthroid. And that's another story that Synthroid didn't work. And I ended up on natural desiccated thyroid. But if you've ever looked at the symptoms for hypothyroidism, it's page two columns long. Yeah. And I had about three quarters of them, <laughs> right? And one of them was complete memory loss. Wow. I just completely lost my memory. I went to two different neurologists and they tested me for early onset Alzheimer's or dementia. And they, both of them uh, tested me separately. And they said, nope, it's not dementia, it's not Alzheimer's, we don't know what's wrong with you. So it was back again to reading clinical studies to find out how, the, the, how memory worked in the human brain and what I could do to, to fix this because they said they couldn't help me. I was on my own again. And that was when I finally came across the word nootropic and it was related to, um, it's just cognitive, a nootropic is basically a natural cognitive enhancer, something that helps the human brain. The name nootropic was developed by Dr. Cornelia Gugeu in 1973 or 1972. In 1963, He's a, he, was a, he was a Romanian scientist and chemist and he was working with Dr. Pavlov in 1962 in St. Petersburg, and they were looking for some way to, I think it was to cure motion sickness. Mm. And so they came up with a derivative of GABA called paracetam. And um, it worked, but it didn't help with motion sickness, it helped with cognition and memory. And they went, whoa, this is cool. So they made a drug out of it. And it became so pot, they it turned into a prescription drug in Russia. And news of this spread around the world and other companies started developing offshoots of paracetam and they came up with aniracetam and oxyracetam and different racetams to, to address different things like Alzheimer's. And Dr. Gageu saw this was happening and he decided that he wanted to name this class of supplements. And so he came up with the word nootropic in 1972 as derived from the Greek, new for mind and terpen to bend. So to bend hmm. the mind. Wow. Yeah. And then he came up with a definition of nootropic. And this definition I've done my best to stick to um, since I started Nootropics Expert. He said a true nootropic enhances memory and the ability to learn. It assists brain function under disruptive conditions. It protects the brain from chemical and physical toxins like drugs and barbiturates, it increases natural cognitive processes, and it must be non-toxic to humans and nor depress the brain. Mm -hmm. And so when I see journalists and other people refer to things like Adderall and Ritalin and Modafinil as a nootropic, I lose it because they aren't. You need a prescription mm -hmm. to get them. Nootropics are natural. You can get them at the, anybody can get them at the local vitamin shop or the health food store. You don't need a prescription to get them. And I have seen, when I started Nootropics Expert a couple of years after I started, finally started recovering enough um, because I just wanted to share what I was finding out about, you know, how the brain worked and what you could do naturally to help it. And uh, I found a Nootropics Expert. Um, but I've been sticking to that definition since, and I've reviewed 102 individual supplements that one way or another help the human brain. Um, it, any, everything from acetylcholine to 
uh, not acetylcholine, I'm sorry, acetyl-L-carnitine to alpha-GPC to alpha-lipoic acid to glutathione to L-DOPA to NADH to quercetin to rosemary to zinc. <laughs> so 102 of those. And uh, then I've done a lot of writing since then, a couple of books, and I just, I just keep on writing about what I'm finding. Wow. You know, it's interesting to me, like your journey, a lot of people go through that for like years of just not feeling good and, you know, being told, well, I don't know what's wrong with you. And it's so disheartening for people and it's exhausting and they're not getting better. And yeah. it's just amazing to me that you were able to do your own research and put these things together in it actually worked and you actually feel better. So that is incredible. I had no choice. Yeah. You know, it, it was that or die, literally. I mean, yeah. that's how bad I felt. Um, it was just, I've got people that love me and I decided I wanted to live and I just had to figure this thing out. And if the doctors couldn't help me, um, I had to figure this thing out. So I just started, I, I, not too long ago, I did a little, just a, I got my calculator out to figure out how much time I've spent studying nootropic supplements and I can well over 10,000 hours. Wow. Just reading clinical studies and writing about them. Yeah. I listened to, you know, just some of your YouTube videos and your, your website's great. And you've got, you have downloaded your book and you've got another, I mean, it's really incredible, the knowledge base and, I feel like it's just reassuring because you have done the work, you have done the research, it's science-based and you don't always get that. You don't really always know what you're getting. Um, so that's huge. Yeah. It's uh, and, and yeah, it just, I've over a hundred, hundred, I think 110,000 YouTube subscribers now. Yeah. And I saw that. That's 111, awesome. 111,000 people come to the website. Every yeah. Month. That's awesome. Well, why, what's going on in our brain? I mean, what, what, what's causing this, you know, what, what's leading to these changes and the cognitive decline and, you know, how do people know like, Hey, this might work for me. Yeah. Well, think about a hundred years ago, there was no such thing as a supplement industry. Yeah. Because we, we didn't need it. But in 2022, we can't get these nutrients from food anymore. Yeah. And so because our the, food, the stuff is grown on depleted soil with industrial farming and then nutrients are lost during harvest, they're lost during storage, they're lost during transport, they're lost during processing. By the time you get that thing to your on your fork and to your mouth, it's got even less nutrients than what it did when it started out and when it started out it was already depleted. And so there's that uh, so the supplement, my point is the supplement industry now is a multi-billion dollar industry wow. simply because we can't get this stuff from food. But then we've also are inundated and surrounded by things like toxic plastics and the air that we breathe. I mean, the carbon dioxide levels in the air is, I think the last time I checked is 410 parts per, per million. And 50 years ago, it was half that. Wow. And, you know, so just everything, you're, you, the seat that you're sitting on, your car seat, your desk, the mouse that you're using, the containers that your food come in, the containers that your shampoo and, you, and your toothpaste is in, like, we're just inundated with these toxins that are wreaking havoc on our body and brain. And it's hurting our immune system. It's hurting um our it's messing with our sex hormones it's messing with our thyroid hormones it's yeah it's and 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 mainstream medicine can't keep up um so it's just people are taking matters into their own hands and going if nobody else can help me i've got to figure this thing out and <laughs> uh, yeah contributing to that a little bit it's amazing the testing that we can do um for the toxins and the metals and yeah. i've seen some reports and it's pretty it's pretty shocking like the stuff that's in there <laughs> you don't realize yeah. i mean from mold to you know the the toxin it's like wow i mean it's a lot when you look at those results and um then patients are like what do we do now right yeah. so 
Um, that's where I guess this can play a big part. Um, so some interesting things I want to talk with you about, you know, what your recommendations are, how we get started and all that good stuff. Okay. Um, but on a podcast I listened to you with, you talked about nicotine and I read your article on it. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And what it's interesting because we deal with a lot of long haul COVID patients and I've seen some of the research saying that nicotine can be helpful in that. I don't know what you know about that, but maybe you could just touch on nicotine and how it works and how people are really actually using it for different things and side effects and that kind of thing and who sure. shouldn't be using it. Okay. Um, well, you've got acetylcholine is, is one of your major uh, neurotransmitters. And it's your signaling neurotransmitter, if you will. When you stick out your tongue or you wiggle your nose or you blink your eyes or you move your leg, that signal comes from acetylcholine. Now, the muscle contraction itself is dependent on do dopamine, but the signal to do that is acetylcholine. And so it works like that in your brain too, but you don't have muscles in your brain. You've got nerve cells in your brain called neurons. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two different kinds of acetylcholine receptors in your brain. There's muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, and there's nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And nicotine attaches to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And so um, using nicotine can help with things like improving short and long-term memory because it binds to uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. It boosts the release of acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, and glutamate. So it affects alertness, attention, cognition, memory, and mood. Um, it modulates the connectivity and structure of brain networks. Um, it improves whole brain communications e efficiency and just like boosting overall cognitive and brain, uh, brain function. Um, so, and it's a natural substance. Uh, we know that it comes from primarily tobacco, but people have been using nicotine for since man existed, right? One yeah. way or another. Um, as a nootropic, it can be very helpful, but you've got to be very careful with using it. I recommend using nicotine lozenges, like two milligram and cut them in half so that you're just using a milligram at a time and use it sublingually and only use it occasionally okay. because the, the a couple of problems with nicotine is if you use too much nicotine, it down regulates those same receptors. Okay. And so it's dose responsive, if you will. So you've got to keep the dose low. You've got to keep usage infrequent and be aware that it can, it's addictive. So if a person has got an addictive, a person not a personality but they they tend towards addiction um they have to be particularly careful because it's easy to get addicted to nicotine because it just feels good when yeah. you use nicotine and things just work so much better when you use nicotine right i do not <laughs> yeah. recommend getting it from smoking cigarettes or cigars or chewing tobacco or anything because of all the other toxins that are in tobacco but the nicotine itself can be really really helpful yeah. So who would want to be using it? I mean, like, you know, before events or, you know, when do you use it? Right before a podcast. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I needed that. <laughs> right? okay. Because it just helps. Yeah. It helps with verbal fluidity and it just makes it easier to talk. It makes kinds of conversations flow easier. Yeah. Well, I read in your article, just something to think about, though, is if you have a history of cancer or along those lines, you should totally avoid it. Yeah, because there is this misconception that nicotine causes cancer. It doesn't. Okay. But clinical studies does show that if you have cancer, it can promote tumor growth. Okay. That's so scary. If you're, if you're cancer free, then you're fine. But if you've got any type of cancer, I would just recommend staying away from nicotine. Okay. And there are very, very, very few supplements that are in that category. Nicotine, in fact, is one of the only ones that I can think of right off the top of my head that promotes tumor growth. There's a couple of other ones, and I just can't think of them right now, but nicotine is certainly at the top of the list. Have you, this is a side note, because we're talking about that. Um, what about NAD boosters in that? What are your thoughts on that? Um, there's a lot of use in that, even IV infusions and in that. Do you feel like that's safe? It's, certainly, know, like it's certainly safe, 
Okay. But it, it depends on what you're using it for. I mean, it doesn't work for everybody. Okay. Um, it works for some people. Um, NAD and NADH and NAD plus uh, is an offshoot of um, niacin. And NADH helps boost the production of dopamine and norepinephrine. So it helps with boosting mental performance, including better memory, alertness, and energy. Mm -hmm. um, it's used in the formation of adenosine triphosphate. Mm -hmm. which is many is producing your mitochondria which is your main energy supply mm -hmm. so it you know nadh can be helpful for, for some people and nad plus can be helpful for some people but one of the interesting things they found with early on in, in research with covid that people were extremely deficient in nad plus people that had had covid and but you couldn't supplement with NAD plus with the expectation of boosting NAD plus levels back up to where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The only thing that works is regular niacin. Oh wow! Yeah. So for long haul patients, niacin would be good to take. Niacin, niacin is better than um, better than using um, trying to use NAD plus because NAD plus just does, simply does not work. Wow, interesting. They, all, they also found people that are um, were dealing with long COVID were deficient in vitamin C. Um, so it's easy to restore your vitamin C levels, just, you know, 500 milligrams of vitamin C three times a day. And and you'll get, it takes a while to build up your, your vitamin C levels too. But um, vitamin D is also really helpful because it's highly effective in treating lung tissue damage. Yeah, there's been a lot of research on vitamin D. It, we check that on everybody. It's crazy how low people can be and they don't even know. Really? Is, I, you know, I, yeah. I, I, most people are deficient in vitamin. You know, the only other place that you can get vitamin D is from the sun. Right? Yeah. And unless you can afford two or three hours a day to lie nude in the sun to get your vitamin D, you've got to supplement with it. You know, I just, I live in South Florida and there's plenty of sun down here and i was using 5000 iu of vitamin d every single day for years and one sometime last year i had my labs done and i was on the lower end of the bell curve for vitamin d i mean it blew me away i'm going what really and so i boosted my um to 10000 iu per day the next time i had my labs done i was in the middle of the bell curve wow yeah i mean there's different things that can affect vitamin d i mean gut health I mean, if yeah. your gut's not working well, I mean, you're probably not going to be absorbing that vitamin D. It's crazy how it's all connected. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even kids, check kids, they're low in D and, you know, the risk of respiratory infections and everything. It's just crazy how that one, that one thing makes such a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're lucky to be there though, because I'm in Missouri and we won't be seeing much sun for quite a while. <laughs> oh, so, um, I want to talk about methylene blue. Um, it's been kind of, you know, circul circulating and growing interest. I read a book on it. And it really is so incredible to me, um, all the benefits of it. It's not very easy to consume. I'm just going to mention that it does not taste good. So maybe you can give some recommendations on that. But um, what is methylene blue and what is it used for? How does it help us? Sure. Uh, methylene blue is a synthetic compound. Um, it was d synthesized as a textile dye in the late 1800s, and it became the first synthetic drug to be used in humans. It was used for the treatment of malaria back in the late 1800s. Uh, and then in the early 20th century, psychiatrists you were using methylene blue and for an experimental treatment for schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And it's currently being studied for potential therapy for mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and other neurodegenerative disorders. They all share a common problem with mitochondrial function, mm. these, these um, cognition issues. So that's where methyl, methylene blue comes in. Methylene blue just donates an electron to the electron transport chain for uh, the production of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Wow. Isn't it crazy just the thought, like our little mitochondria are so responsible for everything. I mean, as we age and the decline, I mean, it's just incredible how much that, that one part of our cell is so powerful. 
And if that's not functioning, we don't feel well. I mean, that's where sickness begins. It's so interesting. Um, what is the evidence for using methylene blue? I mean, who should be using it? Can use it safely? How much? I mean, it's, it makes a difference, right? Like where you get it. Yeah, there's different kinds of, you can buy methylene blue in the pet store because they use it for um, detoxing and disinfecting aquariums. That's not the methylene blue you want to use. <laughs> I mean, there's pharmaceutical, they use methylene blue in emergency rooms um, it, and it's still used today. So there's pharmaceutical grade meth methylene blue and the difference between just industrial methylene blue and pharmaceutical grade is the level of heavy metals. Okay. So pharmaceutical grade methylene blue is has far, far fewer heavy metals than what just regular industrial form of methylene blue does. So, and there's very few places that you can find um, pharmaceutical grade methylene blue. Okay. Um, I usually, I've got an affiliate a relationship with a company called CZTL that are in Europe. And um, I've been sending people there for, um, and they've been ordering a lot of uh, methylene blue actually. Um, they order the powder and then you mix up your own solution. Uh -huh. And the recommended dosage on methylene blue is anywhere from 0.5 to 4 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Okay. So like for me, I found a dose of about 45 milligrams per day seemed to be ideal. A lot of people can use half that. Um, but let's not get into trying to mix the solution because companies like CZTL have actually got a page where it shows you how to mix the solution just with ordinary distilled water oh, okay or, or refined water is it um is there any risk of taking it like could it yeah. do anything bad to you like your brain um if what are your you, thoughts if you you cannot if you are using an maoi a prescription maoi or an ssri you want to avoid using methylene blue Okay. Because there's the very real danger of um, either serotonin syndrome or um, a heart attack. Okay. If it's problems with uh, MAOI, because it's an MAOI, it's an MA, it's a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. It's also an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, and it affects um, because it affects MAOI. Um, it affects not only dopamine but serotonin. So if you try using it with an SSRI, it, serotonin syndrome can kill you. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. I did want to ask you because it did scare me when I read up on what it can contain, like aluminum and yeah. um, arsenic. And I thought, well, why would we want to be consuming that? Is the benefits outweighing the risk? Um, that's the reason why you need pharmaceutical grade. Okay. Um, you know, and higher, there's still going to be some heavy metals and even more pharmaceutical grade methylene blue. So um, you want to avoid high doses. Okay. Actually, it's, it's bad to use a high, again, the, the methylene blue is dose res, um, responsive too. So too high a dose and it ends up becoming a pro-oxidant rather than an antioxidant. So okay. it ends up stealing electrons rather than donating electrons to the electron transport chain. Uh, okay. Right? Is, yeah. So you do you it. do it? Do you use methylene blue? I don't. I've tried it a couple of times, but my nootropic stack works and I don't really need it. Okay. You know? Yeah. I, I read, I think in the book, it talked about using it with COVID as well. I thought, wow, I mean, this is just, there's so many different things that you can use yeah. it for. Um, wow. So um, do you have a link on your website to the brand that you recommend? I do. Okay. I think, I mean, I read the article. I think it was in there. Um, so you take a lot of stuff. When I listened to your top supplements for 2022, you were going through the list and they were powerhouses. I mean, they are, I've read a lot up on them and um, they're in there. So it's totally safe to be taking all of those different things. I've, you know, I've been using my stack for the last 16 years, like four times a day. 
um, three times a day. My main stack has got, I've got a main stack that I use in the morning, a main stack, the same thing I use again at noon. Then there's a fewer supplements that I use around four o'clock in the afternoon. And then I've got a sleep stack that okay. I used about 90, 90 minutes before bed. But I've been doing that every single day for the last 16 years without any problem. Now I do get my labs done like four times a year at least. And so I keep an eye on my liver health and my kidney health. And okay. my numbers always come up fine. But that's the thing you need to pay attention to okay. is um, just, you know, it, it you can use lots of supplements, but just follow the dosage recommendations. If you find something that works, stay with that dose. Don't use more of it okay. because it'll come back to bite you. Um, and if you're concerned about it doing any harm, just ask your doctor to do some labs and just make sure that your kidney and kidneys and, and liver are, are healthy and your numbers are right. Okay. Um, I want you to go through your top recommendations and what, what you would use them for, but I, you mentioned omega threes and your recommendation on that. And I think that's important because that is a really big deal and it's really important for people to be getting enough of those. So what is your recommendation for omega threes and how to actually get what you need to be beneficial? Sure. Our brain is um, now there's some controversy over about how about 60% fat. Okay, and most of this fat is DHA. Consider that each of your brain cells is, is surrounded by a membrane. And that membrane is made up of DHA, phosphatidylserine, and phosphatidylcholine. And if you're deficient in any one of these lipids, that membrane starts to lose its permeability. And what that means is that it, the good stuff like water and oxygen and nutrients have a harder time getting into the cell. And then the toxins and garbage have a harder time getting out of the cell. And how this manifests in everyday life is brain cell signaling slows down. So your reaction time slows down. You can't think on your feet. Um, mm -hmm. Short-term and working memory suffer. Um, verbal fluidity suffers. Um, and worst case, anxiety, depression, and worst, worst, worst case, it can turn into really nasty things like Alzheimer's, depression, or Alzheimer's, you know, dementia, Huntington's, all mm -hmm. kinds of nastiness if you let things go too far. But what in my research, I found out consistently that every adult human needs a minimum of 1000 milligrams per day of DHA. And you can't get this from regular fish oil supplements and most omega three supplements because uh, the dosages are too low, and they usually have more EPA than DHA. Mm -hmm. So I recommend getting a DHA supplement, there are a handful of companies that produce a DHA supplement. So two gel caps will give you a 1000 milligrams of DHA, and then half that of EPA. Okay. Now, you, you need EPA. I mean, there is some research showing that EPA helps with things like depression. Mm -hmm. But when you use DHA as a supplement, it helps manufacture EPA in your system. So, okay. Um, look for a, a DHA supplement that two gel caps will give you a 1000 milligrams. 900 or 1000 milligrams around then and do it every day. And it's going to take a while for this to build up in your system. Um, there's a, a, a lab that you can get done called the omega three index. And it measures the ratio between omega sixes and omega threes. And the um, uh, modern humans have this crazy ratio of like 18 or 19 to one. And our ancestors are used to be one to one or two to one because mm -hmm. we get our omega-6s from all the processed foods that we eat, the cereals, all, all that, the stuff that we eat way too many omega-6s. Mm -hmm. And it ends up suppressing the omega-3s and we don't eat enough seafood, right? Yeah, that's, that's the only true. other place that we can get it from. Mm -hmm. Really enough of it. Um, people ask me all the time about flaxseed oil and stuff like that. And it's just, there's not enough in there. Um, you need to get it. DHA is distilled from uh, either oily fish or from algae, marine algae. Mm -hmm. And that's actually where marine life, like fish and krill, and they get their omega-3s omega from algae. Okay. Right? So yeah. you can either get DHA that's made from marine, a specific kind of marine algae or um, distilled from highly refined um, fish oil. Okay. It's on your site where to get the DHA? Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of links to the couple of brands that I like using. 
Okay. Because that's a big one. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that does a lot of good for you. What about quercetin? We started seeing that with COVID a lot, but I've been shocked with learning about the benefits of quercetin. I found out, I'd never heard of quercetin before, but I found out about it from my primary doctor, oddly enough. And this was early on in COVID. And I was getting, I, um, I had some major back surgery coming up. So he was doing a, a full physical. And, but this was early on in COVID. And I just asked him about it. I said, you know, how's things going in your practice here with COVID? He didn't say anything. He walked out of his office and he came back in a couple of minutes later with a handful of paper. And it was handwritten notes, his own clinical studies. He had 18 patients that um, 16 of them were using 1,000 milligrams of quercetin three times a day. And within a couple of weeks, they were cured of COVID. Wow, that's a lot. The people that refused to use quercetin died. Oh, wow. <laughs> So um, I had to find out about this. And so I did some research and I found out that um, quercetin and uh, the first one I came across is the Chinese study showed that quercetin bound with the spike pro protein in the coronavirus, reducing its ability to infect cells. Mm -hmm. So it just stops the virus from getting into the cells so your system can get rid of it. Wow. I don't think I was using enough then. If I mean, I was maybe doing 500 twice a day. So really, you can safely up that dose. Temporary for, for a short period of time. Now, there's okay. no there's no long term studies like the use. Is it safe to use quercetin or a lot of these supplements long term because nobody's willing to pay the multi millions of dollars um, that it's required for the research on long term use of these things. Um, but it's, you can safely use 500 milligrams twice a day of quercetin just for helping things like whenever I get my lungs, my, you know, kind of like plugged up a little bit for whatever reason, and I'm not breathing as easy as I normally do. I just take a couple of capsules of quercetin and within an hour I'm breathing easier. Are you using NAC as well? Um, yes, I am. it's one of my favorite supplements. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, that was another one that I learned about just through COVID and it's really powerful. They used to use it all the time, right? For liver, um, Tylenol toxicity and. They still use it in the emergency rooms for acetylcholine poisoning or, or acetaminophen, is it? Acetaminophen, yeah. Acetaminophen poisoning. Yeah. But NAC is just, it's N-acetylocysteine. Um, it's a precursor to the synthesis of glutathione. So it supports your master antioxidant glutathione. Um, where it comes into play for aging or for somebody that's dealing with ADD or ADHD and using stimulants, it helps restore dysfunctional dopamine receptors. Oh, wow. How much can you take a day then? I so recommend 500 milligrams three times a day. Okay. And you can do that for quite a while? I've been doing that three times a day every day for 16 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. That's good. I'm going to start upping mine. Um, because isn't it important to more boost, um, you know, take things that actually help glutathione or is it, you know, instead of taking it itself or what are your thoughts on that? You know, like that's alpha -lipoic that's acid? I was, I've been, I've been talking about NAC for, for years and then, um, uh, I, somebody, a supplement came along that had glut reduced glutathione in it. So I had to do my research on glutathione. And what I found out is that there are certain regions in your brain that prefer using NAC and some regions in your brain prefer using glutathione. Mm. So it helps to use both of them. Okay. For, for, for brain health. Okay. We give that IV in our clinic. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah. IV glutathione. We do it like a push after, like they'll get an infusion and we do it separately. Um, but that's typically how we give it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Even like people recovering from COVID and just sure. illness in general or long-term illnesses, yeah. um, we'll give it. So it's so interesting. Like I started taking alpha lipoic acid years ago. I just studied, it was a book about the brain and I started taking it. And then it was just wild how the research has grown surrounding alpha lipoic acid. Do you take that? I do. Um, I use a, um, it's called performance lab energy, which includes our lipoic acid, LCAR, uh, CoQ10, and PQQ, 
and the combination of those four supplements help boost the manufacture of adenosine triphosphate in your mitochondria, and it helps helps keep your um, mitochondria healthy too. Okay. Um, alpha lipoic acid. Your body uses arlipoic acid rather than alpha lipoic acid. Um, it boosts the production of acetylcholine and it boosts glucose uptake in your brain. Glucose is used for ATP production. Um, it shows promise in some clinical studies for preventing and managing Alzheimer's disease. Mm. It helps regenerate other depleted antioxidants like vitamin C, vitamin E, glutathione, and it helps recycle CoQ10. The, the wow. antioxidants that are already in your body, but you've used them, it helps you reuse them. Um, it helps reduce inflammation and it gets, helps get rid of heavy metals. Wow. Um, so it, yeah, it does lots of stuff. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, what about, are you taking CoQ10? I do. It's in that supplement that I'm... Oh, it's in the supplement. Okay. Because I read up on that. That's a really good one. I feel I've been taking that. I notice a difference. Yeah. Um, CoQ10 donates an electron to the electron transport chain similar to methylene blue. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I can tell a difference, you know, just because I've dealt with some long COVID stuff. I've uh -huh. been doing some of that stuff myself, and I feel like I notice a difference. Yeah. Um, what are your top, you know, you, you, that video, everybody should watch, you go through your top recommendations for 2022. Um, could you just go through like, you know, some of that? I thought it was just amazing how you explain like, boom, 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 how this works, why you want to take it. Um, if you don't mind, that'd be awesome. I don't mind at all. Um, yeah, the best nootropics for 2022, I use everything on this list. So um, when I, when people ask me, what, are, what is the best nootropic? You know, it's just, I can't answer that question because it, it, what is the best nootropic for you? What are you trying to do? Mm -hmm. So in my article for best nootropics, I've divided it into sections to address different forms of cognitive support, like processing speed, decision-making, focus, flow, and thinking is one category. Learning and memory is another category. Anxiety and depression is another category. Energy and motivation is another category. And then brain repair and maintenance is another category and so i put together a, um, a list of supplements that addresses each one of these things but they um address more than one thing <laughs> yeah. like acetyl l-carnitine for example is a cofactor in the synthesis of acetylcholine but it also helps tran transport fatty acids into mitochondria for the synthesis of atp and then after the ATP is produced, it helps flush out the oxidized fatty acids. Um, wow. So it covers a couple of categories, <laughs> you know, it's... That increased blood flow? Um, I think that Alcar increases blood flow to a certain extent. Okay. Um, it's not my first choice on, on increasing blood flow. Okay. Um, it also boosts brain-derived nootropic factor. Oh, okay. Alcar, Alcar does. Um, uh, one of my favorite supplements that I've been using for a long time that's a little harder to get is aniracetam. Uh, it's, I think it was the third racetam that was developed. Um, I use it. I found that it was one of the best things that I found for me anyway for depression. I can't use SSRIs. Okay. And I find that aniracetam works for me. But um, I use it primarily for um, mood and for verbal fluidity. Uh, okay. Um, it just... it it helps it helps release two to three hundred percent more acetylcholine and that seems to help with the verbal fluidity just so i took some just before this podcast oh wow so our, just conversation goes easier i wonder if they're giving that kind of thing in like what myasthenia gravis that's an acetylcholine issue i wonder if if there's studies on that or taking some of those supplements would benefit that I'm sorry, I missed that part. Myosinic gravis. I think that's an acetylcholine issue. I um, wonder if some of the supplements would no, be I'm beneficial. Not, I'm not familiar with that. Okay. The easiest way to support directly increase levels of acetylcholine in your brain is with either alpha GPC or CDP choline combined with Alcar. Okay. And you also need thiamine or vitamin B1 and B5 that work as cofactors for the synthesis of acetylcholine. Now for long-term use, I recommend CDP choline rather than alpha GPC because there was a study that came out last year from Japan where they followed 
you know, I can't remember. It was uh, millions and millions of people. They followed him for 10 years. And they found that the people that used Alpha GPC daily for 10 years had a 40% chan increased chance of stroke. Oh. And as soon as I found out about that, I went, whoa, okay. <laughs> I got to warn my community. And if you're going to use it long term, and I switched to CDP choline, there isn't that problem with CDP choline. Okay. Wow. The B vitamins are so important. You know, the B vitamins are involved. They're cofactors in the synthesis of all of your major neurotransmitters. You know, if you haven't got enough vitamin B6, B9, or B12, you can't make dopamine. Wow. Right? And if you haven't got enough thiamine or vitamin B5, you can't make acetylcholine. So the B vitamins are involved in the synthesis of all your major neurotransmitters. Some are involved in the synthesis of RNA and DNA. Um, involved in red blood cell formation. They're involved in ion channel modulation. Um, they're involved in blood flow, controlling homocysteine. I mean, I could go on and on and on about the B vitamins. Yeah. Now, if you're, it's important when it comes to these vitamins and minerals that you use reg, natural organic vitamins and chelated minerals. Because cheaper multivitamins use synthetic vitamins and the minerals are literally ground up rock. Oh, wow. So avoid things like one a day and in centrum because your body can't use it. You can't convert it. Interesting. And find a raw, raw food or whole food multi that is, they grow it on different kinds of probiotics and yeast, and then harvest the nutrients. And the nutrients they, they harvest, the vitamins and the minerals, are ex in exactly the same form as you would get from a plant. Okay. So as soon as you take it, your body is going to use it. And a quick way to check whether um, a, a multivitamin is natural or synthetic is look at vit uh, vitamin B9. If it's got folic acid in it, put it back on, its sh on the shelf. Okay. If, it's, if it's got methylfolate, it's a keeper because our body uses methylfolate. The same thing with vitamin B12. If it's got cyanocobalamin, put it back on the shelf. If it's got methylcobalamin, it, it's, um, use it. Um, cyanocobalamin, the cyana part stands for a cyanide molecule. Oh, wow. So you don't really want to take cyanide as a supplement. Yeah. Um, but that's the quickest way. If somebody goes through the expense of including methylfolate, and methylcobalamin, which are expensive raw ingredients. But if they use those, that form in the multivitamin, you're pretty sure that the rest of the multivitamin is natural. Okay. Same thing with a B complex. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. What else do you recommend? Uh, we talked about CDB coin. We talked about DHA. Uh, lion's mane is another one of my favorite supplements. Lion's mane mushroom. It boosts nerve growth factors, so it helps with brain cell maintenance and repair. Um, it's the most potent way I know of to boost nerve growth factor. There was a study done in Malaysia a few years ago where they took, I think it was 25 Wistar rats, and they took them into the lab and they put them to sleep, and then they used uh, for, uh, you know, forceps to crush one of their hind gluteal nerves, mm -hmm. essentially crippling the rat so the rat couldn't walk. And then they gave these rats lion's mane laced water. And within two weeks, the rats were walking again. Wow. <laughs> and they got pictures um, of their footprints in the clinical study showing this. <laughs> showing That's their, crazy. Showing their paw prints when they were um, handicapped and showing their paw prints after they used lion's mane and they were functioning normally again. Wow. Is that a mixture in the supplement you take? I mean, there's probably a certain dose or. Yeah, I, well, I get it in two ways. One, um, I use a lion's mane um, supplement. I get uh, my uh, mushrooms from Real Mushrooms. It's a company owned by a father and son in Vancouver that have been doing it for decades. And they're kind of like pioneers when it comes to mushrooms. Um, the thing about mushrooms is most mushrooms that are on the, sold as supplements on the market use mycelium. And there's two part, main parts to the mushroom. There's a the mycelium and the fruiting body. Mm -hmm. And the majority of mushrooms, the uh, beta-glucans that are benefiting the human body and brain come from the fruiting body and not the mycelium. But the mycelium, making a mushroom supplement out of mycelium is cheaper because 
think about the mycelium when they're growing these mushrooms the little hair like roots are growing down into a substrate it's usually grain mm -hmm. so when you make a supplement out of that you're getting a capsule of grain okay rather than the mushroom so look at the supplement facts label and make sure that it says fruiting body on it oh that's now, good to know um, lion's mane actually is the one exception to that. Um, this can get really confusing, but lion's mane, uh, one compound comes from the fruiting, fruiting body and the other compound comes from mycelium. But that's the only only uh, mushroom supplement like that. Wow. Yeah, I was just thinking look, that. Look for the fruiting body. I think my bulletproof coffee has lion's mane in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I also get 500 milligrams of lion's mane and um, a supplement that I've been using every day for the last six years called My Lab Pro. Okay, I'm going to look at that because that you have there's several different ones of that, right? That have these different combinations. Yeah, yeah okay. I like My Lab Pro is just a really good overall um, overall supplement that approaches brain health from seven different angles. Okay. Um, it contains, um, let me see. <laughs> I haven't got a bottle handy here. Um, performance or Mind Lab Pro. <sighs> I'm going to try to. Mind Lab Pro. Here we go. The 11 ingredients include. Uh -huh. Vitamin B6, B9, and B12. It's got citicoline. It's got Bacopa monnieri, lion's mane mushroom, phosphatidylserine. Um, I wanted to talk about that one. I've been learning more about that one. Phosphatidylserine? Yeah, that's good to take, isn't it? Some people call it the best nootropic on the planet. Okay. Um, and when you look at it, you kind of like go, huh? What? Really? Because remember when I was talking about brain cell membranes? Mm -hmm. And brain cell membranes are made up of phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylcholine, and DHA. Well, phosphatidyl, I've, I mentioned that I've reviewed 102 of these individual supplements. And each one, and my review for a supplement is anywhere from 10 to 15 pages long. And I spend a lot of time talking about the science, you know, the neuroscience and where it comes from, the history, how it works. But really the bottom line is what does it feel like when you take it as a supplement? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's that the proof is in the pudding there. So um, I don't get that information. I get that information from Amazon. Um, I'll instead of PubMed, I'll go to Amazon and I'll look up the best selling supplement in that category. And I'll just look at the user reviews and see what people are saying about it. And then I put it in my own words and I I put that in that section of my review. This is what I found out about phosphatidylserine. Neurohackers report that using phosphatidylserine as a nootropic boosts energy levels, it improves alertness, there's less brain fog, better memory, logical thinking improves, concentration is better, clarity of thought, weight loss, it's easier to remember names, phone numbers, tasks, etc. Your mood improves, it's anti-anxiety, it lowers cortisol, it relieves insomnia, and you have vivid dreams. Wow, that's isn't incredible. That, isn't that nuts? That's just for one supplement. Yeah. And so 100 milligrams three times a day. Okay. And it works in synergy with DHA to keep brain cell membranes healthy. Wow. That's powerful. I knew I knew I heard great things about it. I just didn't know all the specifics. So thank you for going over that because that's mm. pretty incredible. Wow. And what's next? Uh, what's next? Um, Trying to figure out where I left off. Quercetin was next. We already talked about that. Um, L-tyrosine or N-acetyl L-tyrosine, if just L-tyrosine with an acetyl group added to it, um, that theoretically is supposed to make it more bioavailable. But L-tyrosine is a precursor to the synthesis of dopamine. So okay. dopamine goes on to make norepinephrine, which goes on to make epinephrine or adrenaline, your fight or flight response. Okay. And the safest way to increase the catecholamines is by using either L-tyrosine or N-acetyl-L-tyrosine. Okay. Use 500 milligrams twice a day for the rest of your life, and it's it's fine. Okay. What did you talk about? You talked about something. I was listening to you talking about if you're going to use that one, you said something about using a different one that had to do with serotonin and melatonin. I don't remember specifically, but I thought, okay, you mentioned taking one. Oh, L-tryptophan. 
Okay. Um, I, L-tryptophan is in my sleep stack. There's a couple of ways to increase serotonin. You can use either L-tryptophan or 5-HTP. Now, I don't recommend using 5-HTP because it's harder to dose. Okay. And um, we have found both practical experience and, and um, user reviews as well as clinical studies show that it works great for three or four or five weeks, but then it seems to stop working. Okay. Um, you don't have that problem with a tryptophan. Tryptophan okay. is two steps away from making serotonin, which goes on to make melatonin. And 5-HTP is one step away from making serotonin. Um, so there's no fooling around with 5-HTP. I mean, it's going to make serotonin whether you like it or not. Yeah. Um, but L-tryptophan seems to be, it's safe. You can use it long term. Um, typically the adult dose is 500 milligrams. Some people prefer using a thousand milligrams, whatever works for you. Okay. Um, but that's the easiest way to increase serotonin and melatonin. Wow. And I don't what recommend about... using melatonin as a supplement either. Oh, really? Okay. How come? Cause well, I know it's a, like it's an antioxidant and it's got a lot of benefits. I mean, we've used it a lot for COVID. What are your thoughts? The thing is that our brain uses between 0.5 and 0.8 milligrams of melatonin during the night. Okay. So most melatonin, su melatonin supplements are overdosed. Oh, okay. And the other problem with melatonin is it's synthetic, um, is produced synthetically, and what is on the label is typically not what's in the capsule. The University of Guelph did a study several years ago and they went to the local vitamin shop and they bought, I think it was 25 different melatonin supplements and brought them back to the lab. And they wanted to find out how much melatonin was actually in the capsule or tablet and compare that to what they claimed on the label. It ranged anywhere from 84% less to 450% more than what was declared on the label. Wow. It was, and so there was two of them where that were actually accurate and the rest were, you don't really know what you're getting. Mm. Um, so I personally can't use melatonin in a supplement. Even one milligram makes me feel sick. Really? Um, but you can increase melatonin by using L-tryptophan. Okay. What about glycine versus, I've listened to like a lot about glycine, but then taking serene instead. What are your thoughts on that? What? Does serine turn into glycine? I don't know. Maybe I'm off. Yeah, no, there is some controversy about how to, I think it's glycine. Because I've heard that's amazing for sleep and a lot of other things. It, glycine is used as a sleep supplement and it seems to work for a lot of people. I tried it and it didn't really work for me. Okay. Um, it just didn't do anything bad. It just didn't, didn't help, but it does help a lot of people. Um, it has been shown to be effective with schizophrenia, OCD, and depression. Um, patients who suffered a, um, a, a, in a stroke, like an ischemic stroke, um, are, were, are given glycine orally to help limit the damage to the brain within the first six hours after the stroke. Oh, wow. Um, it's helpful there. If anybody, if one of your patients has a stroke, get to them as quickly as possible and give them some glycine. Wow. Um, let me see. It comes from the Greek word, which I cannot pronounce, which, which means sweet tasting. It's a very sweet tasting supplement. Um, glycine supplementation helps reduce the symptoms of schizophrenia. It helps reduce symptoms of OCD. Um, low blood levels of glycine have been associated with depression. Um, numerous studies have shown that glycine's potential improving sleep, enhancing memory, and increasing insulin sensitivity. It it's modulates inhibitory neurotransmitters via glycine receptors throughout the central nervous system. It potentiates NMDA receptors, which provides an excitatory response, which affects cognition, mood, your immune system, and sleep. Um, I think it's like you can take like pretty high doses, like up to like 3,000 or 5,000 milligrams of that, I think, or grams, maybe. I don't know. I just remember like yeah, thinking got, oh, that's a my lot. Dose, my dosage recommendation is up to three grams per day. Okay. Um, seems to be, that's what clinical studies show that for long-term use now. Okay. Um, some of clinical studies will take a supplement like glycine and dose crazy doses like 20 grams. But keep in mind that these clinical studies are short. They're oh, like, yeah. you know, four, four weeks or six weeks 
And they want to see if they can get an effect with that thing that they're using. So they have to use a high enough dose. Mm -hmm. But for us ordinary people, <laughs> um, we, we're, we're doing this long term. Yeah, so that makes sense. We don't need crazy, crazy high doses. Um, yeah. You know, 300, three, three grams per day seems to be effective for a lot of people. Okay. Yeah, I just have been hearing more about that one. So I wanted to ask you, um, anything else that you want to touch on? Mm, what's a bit, we talked about phosphatidylserine. Pine bark extract is one of the most potent antioxidants that was found in nature. Um, it's a maritime pine bark extract. You can't just go to your pine tree in the backyard and scrape the bark off and make a tea out of it. It's not going to work. It's specifically <laughs> maritime pine bark extract. It comes from France. Um, and it seems to help with um, ADHD because it prevents um, indiscriminate increases in dopamine, norepinephrine, and um, a, a specific ratio, a glutathione to a reductase ratio that are neurotransmitter problems that are associated that contribute to hyperactivity in ADHD. So pine bark extract seems to help with that. It's pro one of its primary claims to fame is boosting brain blood flow. Wow. Because it increases nitric oxide, which helps dilate blood vessels. How do you feel about nitric oxide? Because when I read the book on methylene blue, it talked a lot about not wanting too much extra nitric oxide but then i've read the opposite I've, I've i've seen arguments on both ends yeah the, it's confusing um well you need nitric oxide you yeah. really do just for blood flow if you didn't have any nitric, nitric oxide you would die yeah um now guys like it because it's easier to get an erection if you boost nitric oxide um if you boost nitric oxide in your brain blood flows easier uh, which is important because that means that the good stuff like water and oxygen and nutrients can get into your brain and then the bad stuff can get back out of your brain yeah right yeah um, my actually my favorite favorite way to boost brain blood flow is vinpocetine okay um, vinpocetine is a derivative of the lesser periwinkle plant and it it boosts blood flow so well that you could feel it um it's very gentle it's very subtle but you can feel it just 10 milligrams three times a day for boosting brain blood flow it's a prescription drug in a lot of european countries and it's so effective that a couple of years ago the fda tried to ban it wow and so it's, it's harder to get vinpocetine now because of that because one of the pharmaceutical companies wants to make a drug out of it here in the states yeah, that I mean they tried to take NAC off the market for a while, so that yeah, was crazy. and the yeah. the blowback from the industry was so, so was huge for that one. Yeah, I mean vinpocetine I mean, is a lesser known supplement, but NAC. I mean yeah. people have been using NAC for decades. Yeah, I thought that was a little weird. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Where, what, what, you know, um, real quick, why don't you touch on what you were mentioning to me about what's um, in store for COVID long haul? You mentioned there was a supplement or some studies you were working on. Wait, what can you tell me about that? Sure. In this supplement, um, we already talked about some of them, uh, niacin, vitamin um um, I'm not sure whether we covered this early on in this conversation, but they found that people with long COVID were completely deficient in NA NAD+. Okay. And, but the problem is you, we tried increasing NAD+, but with an NAD+, supplement, and it didn't work. What yeah. works is regular plain old niacin. Um, so 50 milligrams of niacin twice a day. Um, vitamin C, people with long COVID, it seems to be really depleted with deficient in, in vitamin C. So 500 milligrams of vitamin C three times a day, vitamin E, or I'm sorry, vitamin D. Um, you got to figure out what dose works for you. I use 10,000 IU per day. That's what I need. That's what my labs show I need. Some people get, get by with four or 5,000 IU per day. Um, zinc, the combination of zinc with uh, niacin increases CERT1 activity. Mm which manages endothelial repair, cellular autophagy, and the downregulation of pro-inflammatory pro cytokines. How um, much of zinc? Um, 15 milligrams. 15, okay. Because I knew you didn't really need a whole lot. 
No. Um, if you use too much zinc, you end up suppressing copper. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then selenium. Um, found that long COVID was deficient in selenium. We need selenium to convert T4 to T3 thyroid hormone. So 200 micrograms of selenium. Uh, quercetin, which we already talked about. Um, quercetin actually increases NAD plus levels. Wow. Um, it protects the brain uh, from toxicity caused by heavy metals. It's used to lower blood pressure, control obesity, lower cholesterol, protect against heart attacks and stroke. And it has the unique ability to increase Claudin 4, Claudin 4, which seals tight junctions in healing a leaky gut or a leaky blood brain barrier. Wow. And that's quercetin. And, yeah. And for COVID-19, it um, intervenes at every step of from virus entry to replication to protein assembly. Wow. Uh, and then there's NAC, N-acetylalcysteine, 500 milligrams three times a day, precursor to your master antioxidant glutathione. And it reactivates damaged dopamine receptors. Um, I recommend vinpocetine, which we just talked about for increasing brain blood flow so that your brain heals faster. Um, vinpocetine has also been shown to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. So take a look at my my full review for vinpocetine. How do you spell that? I and mean, how how would I look that up? V i n p o c e t i n e. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I'll look that up. Um, and then I've got berberine. Um, berberine increases acetylcholine levels because it acts as an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Um, which helps boost learning and memory. It con controls blood sugar. Um, I use berberine because I was diagnosed a few years ago as pre-diabetic and insulin resistant. And rather than using metformin, my naturopath recommended berberine, which has been shown in clinical studies to go head to head with metformin. And my numbers are normal. Now. Wow. Okay. I'm no longer pre-diabetic or insulin resistant. Wow. That's awesome. And the last thing I recommend is when you take your supplements, take it with a healthy fat um, because some of the ingredients are fat soluble. Okay. And that's why you see on a label, take it with a meal. Um, the reason why they say that is they're assuming that you've got some healthy fats in that meal because water soluble supplements will take care of themselves. But fat soluble ingredients, you need to activate bile acids and some, some enzymes from your pancreas to actually digest these fats. And so they can get into cells. If you don't do that, you, your body just ends up excreting it. So okay. every time I take my nootropic stack, I use a tablespoon of unrefined coconut oil. Okay. You can use a tablespoon of MCT oil, which is a nootropic on its own. It helps produce ketones. Um, you can use um, extra virgin olive oil. You can use walnut oil, whatever kind of oil you like that's healthy. Okay. Just a okay. tablespoon when you take your supplements and forget about this. Take it on an empty stomach or before a meal or with a meal thing. It's, it just gets too complicated. Okay. So you literally like take a spoonful of yeah, just a coconut oil? A tablespoonful of unrefined coconut oil when I down my stack. Okay, cool. I, I thought I heard you say something about taking it with MCT oil. Something or that's MCT oil. If I got MCT oil around, I use that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great information. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. You are just full of knowledge. I mean, I I went down like just listening to your videos, and um, so everybody should go to your YouTube channel. What is it? Uh, just nootropics expert. Just okay. go when you go to YouTube. Just in the search bar, just start typing in nootropics, and nootropics expert will pop up right away. Or David Toman, um, or just go to Google and type in David Toman or nootropics expert, and I'm all over the front page. Yeah, and you do a great job. I notice like you are in the comments, you're responding, and that's awesome because that doesn't always happen. People need help. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's just, it's just great to know, like, hey, you know, my comment matters and you're responding. That's great. Oh, Thank and the, sec the, the second edition of my book is, it was just sent to the publisher. Okay. Well, yeah, I wanted to ask you, t tell yeah. people how to download your book and your first book. And yeah, now it's on its way. Yeah. Uh, Secrets of the Optimized Brain is almost 100 pages. It's free, a free download. Just put in your email address and um, it's 100 pages. It, it has 92 of the most used nootropics use today in the world uh, just a brief description of what each one does um, how you use it and the dosage is in that freebie 
um, my book, Head First, The Complete Guide to Healing and Optimizing Your Brain with Nootropic Supplements, was first published in 2017 as an e-book. I sold several thousand copies, but people were asking for a hard for a hardcover. So I've upgraded the book. It's now um, almost 950 pages. Wow. So it's a big book, but it's head first, the second edition. It should be out within the next month or two. Wow. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank and you. just on everything, I mean, it's just so helpful. And everything we've covered is just incredible. And I'm just, thanks for being here. Hope to have you on again sometime. Absolutely. We've got plenty to talk about. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day. And you too. And happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Same to you. Thanks. Thanks for talking. You're awesome. That was good. It's amazing your journey with hypothyroid and the difference of Synthroid. I listened to you talk about that and I've heard that happening um, with Synthroid and just the negative effects of Synthroid for a I, lot. My of body can't convert it. Yeah. I, just, I kept on getting sicker and sicker and sicker, but I, so I ended up doing some research and I found out about natural desiccated thyroid, but do you think I could find an endocrinologist that would prescribe it? Not a chance. Wow. And, but my brother's a doctor up North and I told him what was going on and somebody was coming down on vacation um, that winter and he, they hand delivered some natural desiccated thyroid. And I started using that and I started getting better. Wow. And then, do you know, I've been taking iodine, just like a small amount. And mm -hmm. I feel like I noticed a difference. I've been taking like the, the ones that support thyroid, like selenium and, yep. and just trying to support my thyroid. Cause I was just like a little on the borderline there. If you're borderline, you can probably get away with just, um, thyroid hormone is made out uh, from L-tyrosine, which I was talking about for, for increasing dopamine, but it's L-tyrosine is made to you to produce thyroid hormone. And that's one of the reasons why I don't recommend using L-DOPA to increase dopamine, because if you use L-DOPA, um, you can't make thyroid hormone. Wow. Right. So L-tyrosine with um, iodine, uh, T4 means four iodine atoms, T T T3 means three iodine atoms, and then selenium helps convert it from T4 to T3. You need magnesium for that. Um, I've been taking magnesium I've, glycinate. Yeah. Is that a good one? Yes, that's a chelated okay. form of magnesium. Yeah. Okay. And so I should take the L tyrosine then. I, is that, do I take that at bedtime? I would avoid taking it at bedtime because you oh. probably interrupt your sleep. I would take it during the day. Okay. Most, how old are you? I'm 49. Okay. So, um, yeah, you can easily, um, your body needs like 500 milligrams of L tyrosine twice a day. I would take it morning and noon. Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely will. The thing is that all of our major neurotransmitters decline with age. And so dopamine declines by 10% per decade starting in your early 20s. That's just sad. So you've got what, maybe 60% of the dopamine in your brain now than you had when you were 21. Yeah, that's and sad. So learning and memory suffers, um, reaction time suffers, fl verbal fluidity suffers, libid libido suffers muscle movement in motor control suffers so yeah. yeah we do do you know much about hyperbaric oxygen i i haven't researched it but i know of it I yeah love it. Do you it's do interesting we have that i haven't done it yet we have it in my clinic and i keep saying i'm going to go in and do it but i, I just want to do it time. yeah i want to do that yeah because it's it's amazing for like head st brain stuff i mean yeah that's what i hear yeah and I think it's totally underutilized for concussions and traumatic brain injuries. And, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we use it a lot for like COVID long. We see a lot of like COVID long haul patients. It's sad. Yeah, it is. Um, low dose naltrexone is being yeah. used a lot. Do you know much about that? I, I know about it because of the, I was dealing with fibromyalgia. Oh yeah. Um, right around the time, I don't deal with that anymore, but back when I was first diagnosed with, um, hypothyroid, yeah. I know that a lot of, uh, I, um, my Bible when that first transpired was stop the thyroid madness. And that's where I learned about low dose naltrexone, but cause some people were using it. Um, but yeah, that's where I learned how to read my own thyroid labs and knew what labs to ask for. And <laughs> the thyroid is no joke. I mean, people, it's just, it's crazy how much if that's off, you do not feel well. There are tens of thousands of Americans, probably millions that are hypothyroid yeah. and they don't know it. Yeah. 
because their doctor looks at TSH. Mm -hmm. And if your TSH is within the bell curve, they pronounce you healthy. Right. And that TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. Yeah. It's your brain telling, knocking on the door of your thyroid saying, make thyroid hormone. It's not saying how much T3 is in your cells. Right. I've been reading up on reverse T3 because we draw T3. that. Yeah. And I'm yeah, thinking, so is it relevant? T3. Is it, I'm trying to. T3 is pooling, uh, pooling in your blood rather than getting into your cells. Okay. So they measure the, you measure the, they, they explain how to measure that, calculate that ratio and stop the thyroid madness. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So yeah, I, I would check out stop. The, she's got a page on there that she's got it in the main menu um, at the top that how do you how do you read your own labs and she'll tell you how to re read free t3 and free t4 and what they should be and reverse t3 stop uh, the thyroid madness stop the thyroid madness yeah i'll she, definitely read that both of them. yeah i've been taking i'm not consistent with it but i've been doing like berberine with alpha acid it's like a combo mm -hmm. but um i need to be more consistent with it <laughs> It's one of, those. one of the keys to success with these nootropic supplements is consistency. Yeah, I'm get excited. I want to look at this mind pro lab right, you're taking. Get the dose right and then use it consistently. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much. You've been awesome. I really appreciate it. I'll edit it up and I'll send it to you and let you know when it's out. Yeah, please. I'll put it on my podcast page. Yeah, awesome. If Great talking you, to you. If it's, on, if it's on YouTube, I'll put it on my YouTube channel too. Yeah, awesome. That'd be awesome. Right. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. It's good to meet you and have you too. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.